Also, exoskeleton arms can be optional. added to this which can give haptic feedback and a sense of weight pressing down on your arms when you are throwing a virtual grenade or holding a virtual gun or sword to make it feel like you are really holding it in real life exclamation mark Press semicolon. Stop listening. Alright guys, so what I was just adding in my notes is um, something related to my omnidirectional treadmill VR system that I've been planning to make. Um, in my past videos on that subject, what we ultimately came down to is in order to cut down on storage space we didn't want a big ring around the person like is this current state of the art for omnidirectional VR treadmills where you play FPS games um, instead we wanted something that would just clip into the ceiling with a hook so you're just hanging from the ceiling and that can all be unhooked and just shoved in a drawer or whatever and put away so it's not taking up a whole room or a large amount of real estate in a room in a house um, so space considerations are of paramount importance, I think, for a VR setup for a gamer. Um, now that all having been said, we came up with this idea of creating basically like omnidirectional roller skates with bearing ball bottoms that just can spin in any direction. And so you just hang from the ceiling and run on those skates and you could kind of just move your legs around and they wouldn't get caught up on the floor because they're frictionless and they can move in any direction. But it'd be weird, it wouldn't feel like real. It'd feel weird. And so I realized, in order to make it feel real and be more immersive, um, I'd either need, like, the first solution I had um, since that video was, well, no, I mentioned it in the video too, I think, in the videos I made on this, was to have um, robotic legs coming up from the ground that match your legs, so when you run, they run, and they can press pressure up on your feet um, to match what the ground would normally do when you're running like up a hill or running in any direction. It would just put pressure on your feet at the right moments and so just uh, make it feel like your feet are actually hitting terrain when you're actually just running, dangling in midair. Um, and that was an acceptable solution to an extent. Uh, that could actually feel real if it's done right. And that's something I could still pursue as an option make a prototype for that type of setup um, but I think that a more attractive solution which is a two-in-one type of solution is to create an exoskeleton suit and then hang yourself from the ceiling and now you can run and the legs of the exoskeleton suit can just tighten when your feet would normally be hitting the ground your virtual character's feet if it hits the ground in the game, the exoskeleton legs would tighten up, resisting your legs running. And so you would feel like, in real life, your legs just hit an obstacle, a.k.a. the ground. They just came in contact. So you slam down into the ground, the, two, the suit tightens up that leg, and you feel like you just impacted the ground. And it's all about simulating the impacts of real-life physics, of real-life obstacles. If you were walking in the game and your leg ran into a tree, the exoskeleton leg would tighten up, causing your leg to not be able to walk forward anymore, so you wouldn't be able to walk through the tree. So it would actually feel like you just bumped into a tree. Um, and so that's how you can actually interact with your environment in the game and feel like you're actually interacting with it in real life. And all of this while just dangling from the ceiling. Uh, and then I took it further with this idea that, oh, you know what, rather than just the legs, we could also have exoskeleton arms, so that if you're holding a weapon in the game, um, you could just hold your hands up like this, and the exoskeleton arms and hands would make it feel like, if you try to grip, closing your grip, 
like closing your grip on the gun you can't do that if the gun's in your hand it's a solid object you couldn't close your fingers so the exoskeleton fingers would prevent you from closing your fingers anymore they'd lock up after you're gripping the gun so you would actually feel like oh wow there's an object here that i'm holding and i can't close my hands anymore even though it's just the exoskeleton fingers indicating um that there's an object there which will sync up with whatever your weapon you're holding in the game or if it's a sword the exoskeleton fingers wouldn't allow you to do this the arms and fingers wouldn't allow you to do that because the hilt of the sword is in between these two hands and you couldn't close your grip all the way because the hilt of the sword is that wide and so the exoskeleton fingers and arms would work together to make it really feel like you're holding a sword and you can't do this and you can't do that because there's a sword in your hand so you can actually simulate um, interactions with real objects in this way using exoskeleton fingers and arms um, and then haptics so like if you're swinging the sword and you just hit the dragon in the game the arms would freeze up you wouldn't be able to swing all the way through because you just collided with something so actual um, game physics could then be translated into the exoskeleton and actually make it feel like wow I just hit something and so that would really create a powerful immersion and it would really feel like you're interacting uh, with the game so uh, I believe that an exoskeleton suit is the ultimate way to give the impression and give all the haptics that you are actually interacting with the world you're in in the VR game Um, the only things I'm a little struggling with is the water in your ear can somehow make you think like it has to do with your sense of balance. And if you're running, you'd be leaning forward more. But if you're hanging from the ceiling, would you be able to lean forward? Depending on your center of gravity, I don't know if you'd just always be vertical. So I was thinking you could have like coming out of the exoskeleton like a bar with a weight on the end on both sides of you and when you lean forward and engage your abs and you're running in the game uh, those two weights would just move forward shifting your center of gravity forward and then rotating you in the air slightly on your harness so that way the water in your ear would match up with you feeling like you're leaning forward and leaning forward in the game and your ears would tell you yeah I actually lean forward in real life as well so that way you can simulate things like falling. If if you get hit back in the game and you your exoskeleton yanks your upper body back, those balls could swing back and actually physically make you laying backwards while hanging from the harness. So the harness then also would have to be hinged around your waist on either side and come up like a swing, like a, at a swing set at a park. Um, so it'd be two chains instead of just one coming down and connecting at about your belt buckle line so that way you could be on a pivot and actually lay down in the VR world um, and do things like falling or being thrown and you could have the sense that you're being physically thrown or falling down so these things um, oh also like you could feel like you're swimming in water if your exoskeleton suit provides a certain amount of resistance as you try to like swim and you could be actually laying face down in midair hanging from the ceiling with your exoskeleton suit on like swimming and feeling the resistance of the water although you wouldn't physically feel water on your skin you could still feel like you're underwater in a weird way and the whole thing is to trick your senses um, maybe actually you could simulate even the feeling of water just by uh, I mean that's a hard one but I feel like um, if you could blast cold air at the person, it could feel like they're in cold water. I don't know. That's That one's tough. How do you make somebody feel like they're in water if they're not? That one's a hard one. But that isn't that important, though, in my opinion. What's important is actually feeling the resistance of the water and being able to lay forward and, and swim. That would be more than immersive enough. I mean, there's going to be some disconnect. It is 
a VR experience after all. It's it doesn't have to always feel real in every circumstance. If a giant, if a dragon in the game breathes fire, you don't want the person to feel like they're actually burning real life necessarily either. But maybe in order to get those types of physical sensations, you could wear um, some type of outfit that actually sends electrical impulses into your skin. But that'd have to be like head to toe, and then you could get um, feelings of feeling like wind just hit you or feeling like you're in water, feeling like you're being burned, or, or feeling like the sun's hitting you. Maybe those types of haptic sensations could be done with some type of advanced clothing in the future, but right now I'm just worried about the main uh, macro elements of just feeling physical sensations um, of resistances and physics of the major things to make an immersive VR experience. So, yeah. We'll stick with that for now. So yeah, we got uh, we got our plan locked down now for our VR experience. I can't wait, man. I can't wait to get into developing that stuff. It's gonna be cool. It really combines robotics and video games, which are two things I want to do. I'm a roboticist and a video game developer. Combining those two fields, which I'm already the best at both. I'm the best video game developer in the world. I'm the best roboticist in the world. Why not be the best the best VR experience developer in the world for creating VR stuff? Plus, I'm already developing exoskeleton suits, so why not make an exoskeleton suit for VR? It all just fits together perfectly for me. It's a no-brainer. I've got to do it. So yeah, that's another YouTube video right there, covering something very important. We got a lot of content coming out. Of, it's going to be interesting, man. I might have to start releasing four videos a day for YouTube because I'm, I'm just a content producing fiend. I produce so much. <laughs>